VAT depends on the input output mechanism. And just to illustrate this, for example, assuming a business person bought an item, let's say in Ocean State, and paid VAT, and takes the goods to, let's say, Sokoto State to sell. Remember, this business person had paid VAT when purchasing the product in Ocean State. And when selling in Sokoto State, it will charge VAT. And by the operation of the input output mechanism, this business person will deduct the input tax paid in Ocean State from the output tax charged in Sokoto State and remit any difference to the relevant tax authority. In this case, because there is a single tax authority handling VAT, it is the same authority that received the VAT in Ocean State that will receive the additional VAT payable in Sokoto State. And so it is easy to work out the input-output mechanism, and there is no issue of the business person based to change. There's no issue of consumers having to pay VAT more than once. However, if this is operated at subnational level, that is, let's say at the state level, it will mean that when the business person is paying that VAT at the state of source, and we have said, assume it's Ocean State, Ocean State will have Ocean State Revenue Authority will have collected that money. And then when this business person is selling that same item in Sokoto State, it will charge VAT. Now, the dilemma is how does that business recoup the VAT paid previously? Either of two things will happen. Either Ocean State will have to refund the VAT collected, or Sokoto State will have to absorb that loss, and that in itself creates confusion. Another problem that will arise is where there is different in rates. If, for example, Ocean State charges VAT, let's say, at 10%, Sokoto State charges VAT, let's say, at 5%. And so, at the point of procuring, procuring the, uh, uh, the goods, this guy will have paid VAT at 10%. But when he's going to sell, it will only charge VAT at 5%. As such, the input suffered is greater than the output. Then the question is, who bears the shortfall of 5%? Will you go to Ocean State to collect that 5%? Or will you ask Sokoto State to reimburse the merchants of 5%. So you will find out that these two reasons are why it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to operate VAT at subnational level. And that is where there's no country in the world that does that. I know that people could say, but what happens in Canada? Canada is equally a federation like Nigeria. but the GST, that's goods and services tax, which is equivalent to VAT that is done in Canada. Even though it's meant to be state tax, it's administered centrally by the Canadian Revenue Authority. And the revenue based on agreed uh, 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 and based on the law is shared to the relevant state. I think only one state in Canada does not participate in that scheme. And that state that doesn't participate does not charge VAT. Somebody could say what happens in the U.S. U.S. has 50 states. U.S. does not practice value-added tax at all. It's one of the very few countries of the world that doesn't do VAT, either VAT as VAT or GST as GST. What happens in the U.S. is what we call sales tax, and it is administered at each state level. And it doesn't operate on an input-output mechanism. 
And it is not every state in the U.S. that charges sales tax. There are some states where you pay uh, sales tax. There are some where you don't pay sales tax. And the rates are also different. And there is no need for input-output mechanism. And there are quite a number of states in the U.S. that doesn't even charge at all based on their own preference wanting to attract businesses to their state. I think the other thing I want to say in respect of administration of VAT in Nigeria is that when you look at the VAT that comes, the revenue that comes, there are three very important avenues that VAT accrue and very significant. One is VAT on imported items, which is collected at the port of entry. As of today, there's no single state government that controls any port in Nigeria. Uh, which is why it becomes a lot easier for the FRS, being a federal government institution, to administer VAT at the port. The second very important source of VAT in Nigeria is the one that we pay when we buy things, which is what happens uh, when you go to any of the shops to buy things. And the third category, which accounts for a substantial amount of VAT collected, is VAT paid by ministries, departments, and agencies of government when contracts are awarded, either contract of supplies or contracts for construction. And that is why when you look at the numbers of VAT collected today, after Lagos, because we have so many ports in Lagos, FCT comes second because majority of contract awards are from federal ministries. And VAT collected in respect of those contracts are from federal governments. So at the end of the day, when we begin to do a critical statistical analysis of collection of VAT revenue, you would discover that what comes from in-country trading, when we go out to buy things here and there, takes not a very substantial proportion of revenue collected from VAT. But notwithstanding these diverse sources of VAT, VAT revenue is still shared 85% to the states and local governments and 15% to the federal government. 